All right, so I'm gonna see what I can do to wrap this painting up. Now, um, there's some things that I think went all right here, um, particularly in the some of the texture that I'm achieving through here looks pretty similar to what's happening in Van Gogh's painting. Um, however, there's definitely some errors. Um, you might notice that this is still too pink. Um, there's some issues with the rendering of the forehead, the rendering of the neck. Um, I'm going to see what I can do to fix some of those issues. And the other thing that I need to maybe take a second look at um, is just some of the proportions of my face. Now, this is my like first ever painting demo. So apologies if it's a little bit rough. Um, I definitely would do some things over again. Uh, or I definitely would do some things differently in my next one. Now, um, one of the mistakes that I can tell that I made is I tipped my whole head a little bit this way. Now, some of that I did on purpose because I was trying to um, a little bit better match the placement of Van Gogh's head. Um, I also made my jaw a little more square than it is through here. Um, some of that is me compensating for camera distortion with my cell phone and some of that is just me making mistakes. So I'm going to go back through and do just a little bit of shifting and see if I can slightly reshape the contour of my face. <clears throat> and that's really going to go a long way towards solving some of these problems. Now, one of my major errors, if I look at the angle of my nose and the angle of my forehead, the angle of my nose is a little more tipped in. Um, my painting, they're fairly parallel. I'm not quite sure why, but I've always had a bad habit of making the bridge of the nose between the eyes a little bit wide. So that's something I just have to compensate for. You know, we all have tendencies to make certain mistakes. I think it has to do with the way that our minds visualize and process information. Um, and because this is a self-portrait, I think, you know, it's just worth pointing out that we sometimes have a little bit of a distorted view of ourselves. Um, the other thing that I did that's a little bit bothersome is I didn't make the nose quite long enough so I'm just gonna pull this down ever so slightly all right so that's getting a little bit better um, now in terms of Van Gogh's painting one of the things that is really important to take a look at is his color um, so I'm actually going to revisit some of the color in this painting as well. Um, now I know that I did not quite achieve some of his warmer greens. So I'm going to just start to layer that in. You see what I mean? Um, part of the reason for that is because I was only using yellow oxide. Um, now at this stage of a painting, it's a little dicey to add in a new pigment. However, in this case, I think pulling a little bit of cadmium yellow into it is going to greatly help me out. I just need to warm this up. I'm definitely zombified <laughs> in this painting. Let's see, yeah. And even though there's this green tone, he still has kind of these like golden and in some areas a slightly peachy tones as well. Mm 
Okay. So I'm going to place his portrait here. And I'm just shaping with my marks the plane of my forehead and I'm making kind of a large color adjustment but honestly that's what needs to happen. Yeah, better. Now he has a very <coughs> furrowed brow in this painting. I think mine is scary enough without that, but we'll see. Okay. So I'm noticing in his lines around his nose, uh, his paint is quite blue. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of ultramarine and in the area where I've maybe reshaped my nose just slightly, I'm gonna go back to my blue. Okay. All right. And can't forget my arm, my ear. So Van Gogh used a lot of really tiny little strokes and that's something that you see in a lot of the Impressionist paintings that influenced him, like Monet's paintings for instance. getting a green mustache here that's not so good let's see and I pulled the bridge of my nose back slightly so I'm actually going to slightly adjust where the highlight is as well sometimes when we make adjustments it becomes a little bit of a domino effect adding a little bit of light to the eye. I think one thing that makes Van Gogh's portrait so striking is the intensity in the eye. So I'm gonna see what I can do to achieve that. This area through here is still a bit of a mess. Um, I'm gonna just take a few strokes and see what I can do to fix that a little bit. And again, I'm just using these short, fast little strokes.
and in Van Gogh's painting he's not using that many warm tones um, but there's more than what I have in mind so I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow oh that is that is bright And I'm just intensifying my highlights. Scary as that is. Using some of these yellows just to kind of bridge my marks going the other way, almost like cross hashing. just a little bit too short so I'm gonna slightly correct that the highlight on the edge of my nose maybe needs slight adjustment as well oh well that wasn't good my cheek is a little bit fuller they're here, unfortunately for me. And then let's adjust some of my colors just a little bit on this side as well. I think I went a little bit dark on my shadow side. It's just a touch too light. This is starting to improve. Thank goodness. I was getting concerned. Now, even though this is so green, those violet tones are still really important. Um, it's probably a little bit hard for you to see, but he does have a lot of color variation in this painting and we can think about it in terms of the importance of color complements okay so there's still some adjustments that need to be made I am just going to finish the rest of this painting on my own um, and some future demos I'm actually going to do it more stop motion and just um, maybe extract some clips and do a little bit of narration over the top. Um, so anyway, I appreciate your patience in terms of going through this demo with me. Thanks.